almost live. It's Professor Oddfellow's Penetralia. Enough empty promises, broad spectrum with just rainbows, now with improved infrared and ultraviolet. Not seeing is believing. But the cue card is blank. Uh, what cue card? The most amazing book in the world. There is one, you know. And it's way above and beyond the second most amazing book in the world. It's a book so mind-blowing that for centuries upon centuries, it was sealed with the seven seals of silence, lest it overwhelm and crush those unprepared for it. It was guarded and protected from the ravages of time by cloistered librarians who dedicated their entire lives to the book's preservation. This book is so old that it makes reference to sources far older than the oldest of ancient records from Babylon or Egypt, civilizations utterly lost to the historical record. Only in 1927 was the book unsealed by its caretakers to be known by the wider world for the first time. The illustrious Dean of Psychologists, Carl Jung, so treasured this book that he called it his constant companion and credited it for stimulating ideas and discoveries and many fundamental insights on the nature of the human mind. Remarkably, the book can be read either forward or backward. Forward, it colorfully explains how to navigate the many dangerous pitfalls of existence. And backward, it compiles the testimonies of people who revived after dying and who described in detail what to expect in the afterlife. But I just revealed one of the book's greatest secrets, that it's a guide to daily existence. You see, the book was written in a sort of code, in that its nature as a guide to life was disguised as concerning only death. It's only about death if you read it backwards, and otherwise it's really about how to sidestep the torments of living. The book was essentially masked with the wrong cover, as one of its protective camouflages over the centuries. Yes, it's secretly about life, and what an extraordinarily hopeful message and guidance it contains. Without exaggeration, it's the most optimistic book I've ever encountered, way above and beyond the second most optimistic book in the world. I will be asked why I keep dodging its title. That's because the book will find you at the right time and in the right way. It might even fall off a shelf onto your foot. I've known that to happen. Here are some hints, though. It was hidden at an elevation of 12,500 feet, 4,000 meters for the metricians, in the 8th century. It predates the culture that vouchsafed it, the culture commonly associated with the book. And rather than advance a particular philosophy, it enables readers to more fully comprehend their own beliefs or agnosticisms. The visionary Philip K. Dick discusses it here and there in his exegesis, and I've referred to it by name in more than one of my videos. The book wasn't transcribed by this sort of creature, but if and when you get an inkling, you'll appreciate my pun. Meanwhile, seven huzzahs, a word of unknown origin, for amazing books, especially those loftiest ones from literally above the clouds. A feeling comes stealing when the sun's done pour. To a page back, to a page back in my old report. Oh, just to read once more. As of yore among the old spells that I adore. How I wish that I could live the old lights over. Nights we spent in clover. If I die, if I die, when we would cross shows. How I'd love to be back at that ritual fire near the wood, in a hood, where we used to dance together. How I'd love to hear the grim song of the raven and to chant till embers fade away, doll of clay. At crossroads by moonlight.
macrophagic carnivore Back there on Styxian shores, I'll read again the old spells to restore